Self-preservation is the most powerful instinct we have. And when you're in there, it's either me or it's him. And it's not gonna be me. There's no question that for many old school and avid MMA fans, even a mention of the name Forrest Griffin prompts a big smile. And for good reason. I wanna be the greatest. Everybody on the face shit. I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest. I make this every day and I'm impatient. Hoping one day I blow up on the basement. Stay The top is so fake and all this shit that I think is amazing. Waiting for my day. Not only is Griffin forever tied to one of the most important and entertaining fights in UFC history, yes, his epic TUF1 finale bout with Stefan Bonar. But Griffin went on to become a fan favorite to hoisted UFC gold. But despite the fact Griffin will always be remembered as a central figure in the UFC's rise to mainstream acceptance, could his legacy have been even greater? Did he need to hang up the gloves when he did? And what if the peak of Forrest's fighting career went down when the sport had the kind of exposure and reach it does now? How big of a star would he have been? I'm not gonna be broken. No I, mean, I can do anything for 25 minutes. I'll take more pain than anybody. And I'm willing to do that. Well, before we dig into this intriguing subject, if you enjoy this video, please be sure to like it and subscribe to the channel. Also, after you finish watching this video right through to the conclusion, please weigh in and share your thoughts on this in the comments section below. Okay, let's get into it. Griffin's path to stardom began in 2004, when the charismatic fighter was cast in the first season of The Ultimate Fighter, which began airing on Spike TV in January 2005. At the time, MMA was still being compared to human cockfighting, so having the sport broadcast on a television network was a pretty big deal. The show continued to gain traction in mainstream circles as it unfolded, but due to what transpired during the show's live finale, TUF1 and Griffin became forever immortalized in MMA history. Griffin ended up fighting Stefan Bonar in the tournament final, which would crown the first winner of TUF at light heavyweight. What transpired was an epic slugfest, and as word of what was transpiring made the rounds, viewership continued to spike. Pun intended. At one juncture, an estimated 3 million people were glued to the TV, watching Benar and Griffin throw hands. That's a huge number, especially for a sport many people were still scoffing at. Griffin won the fight by a unanimous decision. But since the scrap was so entertaining, Benar was also awarded a UFC contract. In 2013, both Benar and Griffin were inducted in the UFC's Hall of Fame for the historic scrap, which many credited as boosting interest in MMA and the UFC massively. So, on account of winning TUF, there was certainly a lot of interest in Griffin as he embarked on his official UFC career. But not too many people at that time were predicting Griffin would accomplish what he did in the octagon. Griffin had shown a ton of heart and toughness during TUF, and it was clear he was working towards becoming a very complete fighter. But the TUF winner didn't have lights out power or explosive athleticism like some of the sport's elite fighters. The Ohio-born fighter went 3-2 in his next five bouts, which included a second win over Bonar. But in 2007, Griffin made the most of a massive opportunity when he was booked to fight Mauricio Shogun Rua. At the time, Rua was widely regarded as one of the best and most vicious fighters on earth. Well, Forrest proceeded to drop jaws throughout the MMA world by submitting Shogun in round three. Due to the massive win, Griffin was tapped to fight the reigning champ, Rampage Jackson in 2008, who similarly to Rua was at the peak of his powers. Case in point, Jackson had ended the reign of Chuck Liddell by bombing Liddell out in the opening round. Chuck just said to John Hackleman, Joe, what happened? Right hand, right hook, right on the butt. Hurt badly. Justified. Great job by John McCarthy. Right hand, bang. 
and he was coming off a decision win over another legend in Dan Henderson. Well, Forrest shocked many throughout the game once again. Total domination on the ground here by Forrest Griffin. Rampage, big Good left. Push. Good push there. By outscoring Jackson for the decision victory. UFC undisputed world light heavyweight champion. Not only was Griffin a fan favorite, he had established himself as one of the planet's best fighters. Unfortunately for Griffin and his fans, the win over Jackson turned out to be the apex of his career. The TUF winner was taken out by Rashad Evans in his first title defense. It's open, now Rashad's on top. He's got his legs under him and he just blasted him. And yeah, Forrest is trying to tap there. And Steve Mazzagatti saw it and, and stepped in. And then a one-sided stoppage loss to the legendary Anderson Silva follow. Anderson! A guy like Anderson, a guy who takes crazy chances against a guy that technically skilled. I mean, Forrest. Griffin proceeded to record decision wins over Tito Ortiz and Rich Franklin. But any talk of him making another title shot run was muzzled by Shogun in 2011. Shogun swarming. Shogun with the big hair on his It is all over! Maurice! The former champ avenged his previous loss to Griffin by knocking him out in the first round. After winning his rubber match with Ortiz in 2012, the public eventually learned from Dana White that Griffin had retired. Since Griffin was only 33 at the time, the news shocked many. Griffin proceeded to confirm he had decided to retire on account of how wrecked his body was. In recent years, Griffin had been forced to recover from multiple injuries to his shoulder and knees. Sure, there is no doubt that Griffin is a beloved fighter in MMA and that he continues to have a sizable following. Case in point, Griffin still has over 700,000 followers on Twitter and he hasn't competed in a decade. But you really have to wonder what Griffin may have been able to do if not for the injuries he sustained later in his career. Could he have gone on to win more belts? Or at least fight for a title one more time? After all, we're talking about a guy who defeated the likes of several elite and legendary fighters and the likes of Ortiz, Rampage, and Shogun Rua. That aside, you also have to wonder how massive of a star Griffin would have been if had accomplished what he did now. At a time when MMA is followed by millions of people around the world and is an accepted mainstream sport. Case in point, the UFC has cards broadcast by ESPN seemingly every week and routinely UFC cards pull in large pay-per-view numbers. When Griffin was recording his biggest wins, MMA was rapidly rising in popularity, yeah. But it was still a fringe sport that a lot of corporations and mainstream interest wanted absolutely nothing to do with. The UFC didn't have its first card broadcast on Fox until the end of 2011. So think about Griffin in the MMA world of today, firing out a self-deprecating zinger in his post-fight interview. After recording a huge win that millions of people watched, what sort of sponsorship deals would Griffin have scored? How many stacks of cash would have followed? Let us know your thoughts about Forrest's legacy in the comment section below.